How close are we to Artificial General Intelligence, AGI for short? At the end of last year, OpenAI announced their newest model, O3. That caused quite some buzz and a lot of speculation that we're close to machines with human-level intelligence. If you trust YouTubers, which maybe just maybe you shouldn't, O3 is AGI. Let's have a look. The newest OpenAI model impressed with several test scores. First, there is a test with hard maths problems called Epoch AI Frontier Math. It'd probably take me a year or so to figure out what the questions even mean. So far, the best an AI did on this test was to correctly solve 2% of the problems. O3 managed a whopping 25%. The second impressive feature is that it produces code faster and with less compute, so at a lower cost than previous models. It's like for an order of magnitude more speed and cost, we can deliver the same code performance even, on this even, or even better. Or even better. If you're a software developer, this is either very good news or very bad news. And the third test score, which has attracted most of the attention, is O3's performance on a test called ARC AGI. That stands for Abstract and Reasoning Corpus for Artificial General Intelligence. It's made of graphical puzzles. Here is an example of an input and an output. Another one, and another one. And then here is the question. You can almost certainly solve this, and if not, the problem is probably your glasses and not your brain. Yet AI struggles with inferring the logic behind these questions. Before the O3 announcement, the record holder for this test scored about 55%. O3 scored 75% at low compute and 87% at high compute, though they paid a price for that, literally. The high compute version cost as much as $3,000 for a single task, whereas the previous model may do with a few dollars. Speaking of cost, the Chinese firm DeepSeek just released a new open source model that has a similar performance to GPT-4. It was vastly cheaper, but has an interesting identity problem. Now, I've been testing it out this morning, and on the surface, it looks and acts just like OpenAI's ChatGPT. And in fact, it actually thinks it is ChatGPT. When I asked, what model are you? It answered, I'm an AI language model created by OpenAI, specifically based on the GPT-4 architecture. But back to O3. On the technical side, the biggest advancement of O3 is that it internally produces several possible solution paths and then evaluates them. This is called a chain of thought. It can even keep track of which solution strategies work best. The high score on the ARC test attracted attention because the average human score on this test is roughly 76%, so that's comparable to the O3 performance. But it's not like passing this test means you have an AGI. It's that if you have an AGI, it should pass the test. So no, this result does not tell us that O3 is AGI. Still, Stephen Heidel from OpenAI commented on X Twitter that it's beginning to look a lot like AGI. Part of the problem is that we don't have any good definition for what AGI even means. Indeed, Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, says he doesn't like the term, but he thinks that by the end of 2025, machines will outsmart humans in many ways. People would be sad if I didn't ask you. We hear a lot about artificial general intelligence. Uh, what is it? When is it going to happen? And what will be the implications? It used to be a term that people used a lot, and it was this really smart AI that was very far off in the future. Yeah. As we get closer to it, I think it's become a less useful term. People use it to mean very different things. Um, some people use it to mean something that's not that different than no one, you know, uh, and some people use it to mean true super intelligence, something smarter than like all of humanity put together. But I, I will say um, by the end of next year, end of 25, I expect we will have systems that can do truly astonishing cognitive tasks, like where you'll use it and be like, hmm, that thing is smarter than me at a lot of at a lot of hard problems. Though the reason he doesn't like talking about AGI may be that OpenAI has a lucrative deal with Microsoft that, however, has a clause saying the contract will terminate if OpenAI reaches AGI. They did this in 2019 to prevent commercial abuse of the technology because safety and all, but come 2024, they'd prefer removing the clause because fuck safety. Personally, I strongly doubt that OpenAI will make it to AGI anytime soon, if ever. 
is because the test results alone don't tell the full story. O3 is still a specific type of AI called a large language model that's trained on a lot of data with examples of the problems it's supposed to solve. But most humans can solve the ARC problems without having ever seen anything like it before. This tells us that these models are not remotely comparable to human intelligence. Many in the AI business currently think that large language models will scale with more data. That is, the more data you feed into them, the better they'll get, eventually surpassing human intelligence. This scaling hypothesis has been observed in many previous models. However, as we just discussed in an earlier episode, there are indications that progress on LLMs has slowed down and that these models will not continue to scale. Jan Lecun from Meta is among those who think that large language models are not the way to AGI, and he thinks it won't come before the end of the decade. You know, we have LLMs that can pass, pass the bar exam, so they must be smart. But then they can't learn to drive in 20 hours like any 17-year-old. They can't learn to clear up the dinner table and fill up the dishwasher like any 10-year-old can learn in one shot. Um, why is that? Like, you know, what what are we missing? What what type of learning or or reasoning architecture or whatever are we missing it's not going to happen next year like you might have heard from 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 you know some other folks sam that, altman you know, yeah right yeah hopefully sam altman, you know elon musk you know various various people uh or or you know dario mnd uh yeah it's going to happen within the next two years or something uh no what may happen in the next two years is that it's going to be more or more difficult to find cases where uh common people will be able to ask questions to the latest chatbot that the chatbot would not be able to answer. Gary Marcus, a cognitive scientist who's worked on the emergence of intelligence, also thinks that AGI is much harder to achieve than many in the field presently believe, and that the problems made worse by the intellectual monoculture of Silicon Valley. AI is harder than its originators um, realized. And actually, I should have added, it's harder than most of the people who are hyping the field right now realize, which includes CEOs of companies like OpenAI, not to mention any names. <laughs> we have an intellectual monoculture in which almost all of the research dollars and energy goes towards transformer models and almost nothing else, and that's insane. But OpenAI and Anthropic and others have spent hundreds of millions of dollars to train these models. They can't just start over again, it's too expensive. This makes it easy to predict what will happen next. These companies will quietly drop the AGI idea and instead find niches in which their models perform well enough to be profitable. Indeed, according to Business Insider, in internal documents between Microsoft and OpenAI, they define AGI as any system that will make more than $100 billion in profit. If I now tell you that OpenAI also considers putting adverts on its models, it suddenly all makes sense. General intelligence means spamming your customers with ads. The future will be bright. Artificial intelligence is everywhere and it's learning to code. It isn't hard to predict that this is going to become a major safety problem for internet browsing soon. Or maybe it already has, it's just that we haven't heard of it. That's why I use NordVPN. NordVPN is an app that makes your internet connection ultra secure. You install it on your phone or laptop and use it to create a safe connection. With NordVPN, no one can spy on your data or track your whereabouts. And it also comes with a threat protection that keeps you safe from malware, trackers and malicious ads. It doesn't just protect your privacy, it also makes your life easier. You know how some content is blocked for users in certain locations? For example, for example, if you're in Europe, a lot of pages in the United States have become inaccessible in recent years. That can get really annoying. But well, NordVPN has more than 5,000 servers all over the world. Just pick a server in the United States. Problem solved. You can make use of our special offer if you use the link nordvpn.com/sabine or the coupon code Sabine. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.